Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I am super excited because we are trying out some Schwenk and Segel barrels from Germany. So for those who don't know, Schwenk and Segel is a Bomberg Germany based clarinet workshop that makes custom instruments. Uh, Germany as a whole has a very rich history of instrument building. The country is full of small workshops that make custom instruments. And it's not unusual for some of these instrument builders to have very long wait lists. Uh, some of them, it's like over five years long to get an instrument built. Uh, every instrument is made basically by hand, uh, by master craftsmen. And the process, as you can imagine, is very slow. They are not mass producing these instruments. This is, of course, a very different process than what we've become accustomed to over in America. I mean, no one is making a living over in Germany going to Schwenk and Segelt's workshop and picking out the best 10 instruments they make a year to sell to their clients. That's just not how it works, um, like it kind of does over here with some of the bigger manufacturers. And don't get me wrong, I'm not here to argue over which produces better instruments in the long run, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying that there's an old world charm, a certain appeal to the idea of master craftsmen making one-off instruments for individual clients, exactly to their specifications. I mean, this is a tradition that has been carried on for hundreds of years, and it's easy to imagine what incredible care and pride these craftsmen must take in the work. I mean, every single instrument that they make is important. And at that point, they are basically works of art. It's just a different mindset than what we've become accustomed to over here. A big part of that is Schwenk and Segelt's creation of a kind of improved French system clarinet. A lot of German manufacturers make reform Bohm instruments, which are basically German board instruments with a sort of French keywork. It's a little bit different, but it's for all intents and purposes very, very close. But Schwenk and Segel has actually taken the French board instrument and keywork and improved it. You know, using our standard keywork as a base, they've tried to take it to the next level, which is very unusual for a German base workshop. You might have seen and heard artists such as Shirley Brill, Caroline Hartig, or Charles Nydick playing these instruments at some point over the last few years. I myself, of course, would love to try one of these instruments one day, but for now, I will have to settle for trying some of their custom-made barrels. Now, SNS literally has thousands of permutations of barrels available on their website. They are truly custom-made. Um, so when I was ordering these barrels, I had no idea what to get. I sent out an email to the workshop and Mr. Segel was kind enough to respond. I let him know what length of barrel I was looking to get, what instrument I was currently playing on, and what mouthpiece I was currently playing on. And with that information, he recommended a bore type. Now, for me, he recommended his U-bore. He describes it as providing a warm and focused sound. That sounded good to me, so I said, sure, I'd love to try some, and he sent out a batch of four barrels to try. Now, I was surprised to open the box and find that each of these barrels had a different external appearance. Being the curious guy that I am, I decided that this would be the perfect time to do a video on how external barrel differences affect the ultimate sound of a barrel given that they all have the same bore, which all of these contain the U bore. As a control, I will put all four of these barrels up against a standard Tosca 65 millimeter barrel that came with my instrument. And a quick side note, if this kind of thing interests you and you're really interested in how different uh, properties can affect a barrel sound, Dr. Mark Kramer did a very interesting study for his dissertation on how barrel material ends up affecting sound. So he goes through several different types of woods and um, it was a single blind study with multiple different clarinetists, and he has them rate their perceived feel and sound differences over the course of the study. It's a super interesting read. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But without further ado, let's listen to some barrels. So as always, I encourage you to listen with headphones or dedicated speakers. You'll find that 
the differences in sound, especially with these barrels, are very subtle. So if you're just listening through your phone speakers or maybe even laptop speakers, um, you're not going to get an accurate picture of how the sound really changes from barrel to barrel. Okay, and there we have it. Could you hear the difference between the barrels? Which barrel was your favorite? I'm sure some of you may say the Tosca barrel, so humor me and let me know which uh, Schwenk and Segel barrel was your favorite, if you had to pick. I'm also sure that a few of you are basically reacting with this meme. And I think that all of these takes are relatively fair. I mean, at no point did any of these barrels change my sound dramatically. And at no point do I believe that any of these barrels would have a tangible effect on how an audience member reacts to my playing. However, each one did push my sound in slightly different ways. And I think that's something that's important to remember about choosing equipment. Ultimately, the sound that's going to come out of your instrument is the sound that you already have pictured in your own head. But different pieces of equipment, and barrels being included in that, will push your sound slightly one way or another. And so I will try and break down how I felt each of these barrels pushed my sound and what direction they kind of got pushed into. Now, in general, the Tosca barrel gave me a more focused sound and there were a little more upper harmonics to the sound as a whole. I think this makes sense as that's what his board design is trying to achieve. And I believe that Mr. Segel was true to his word that the U bore provides warmth and focus in the sound. I think for people who have a naturally brighter sound, this these barrels and this taper would act nicely to help maybe balance out some of that brightness. But for me, the equipment that I choose, my instruments, my mouthpiece, are already on the more covered, warmer, maybe even darker side of things. And my production style also lends itself to be a little more warmer, a little rounder, a little darker. So since perhaps my sound is already a little bit too covered, these barrels might take away a few too many overtones than I'm willing to lose. In the end though, it all comes down to a matter of preference. But in general, here's basically how I thought each barrel played. So the standard two ring uh, regular size barrel played the closest to the Tosca barrel for me. I think something about having two rings brings a certain amount of focus and vibrancy to the sound. While it wasn't quite as focused as the Tosca barrel due to the difference in bore, it was very close. Next, we had the one ring version. And here I immediately noticed a little more warmth, a little more covering to the sound. 
something about losing that ring at the top. Definitely, I definitely felt the loss of a little bit of focus and vibrancy in the sound. If I were getting a different style bore, such as S and S's T bore, which I'm told is very similar to a Manig style bore, which I think most people in America are accustomed with, I might opt for this external style in the hope that it would add a little more warmth or roundness to the otherwise more concentrated focus sound that T bore might provide. In effect, hopefully balancing out the barrel as a whole. I can't tell you if in practice it would actually work that way, but that's my thought process. And then we have the two ring fat boy, which interestingly enough was very similar to its two ringed uh, svelter cousin, um, which I didn't necessarily expect, but it cemented the idea in my head that Having two metal rings adds a certain amount of focus and vibrancy to the sound. Now, it wasn't quite as vibrant as its skinnier brother, but it still provided some. And I think the extra mass helped to strengthen the fundamental of each pitch. Ultimately, it just surprised me how much the two rings made a difference to the sound. Because then we get to the fat boy that has two wooden rings. Now, I feel like a lot of people have become accustomed to this style of barrel in America. What with the popularity of companies like Bakun making MOBA barrels and fat boys that feature prominent wooden rings or wooden bodies with, you know, a lot of mass. In general, this barrel is very light and it was the most interesting barrel to me because it changed my sound in the most noticeable way. However, it's very difficult to articulate exactly how it changed my sound. In general, I want to say that the sound was a little bit lighter. That's the word that keeps popping in my head. The fundamental was a little more present. And when I was playing this barrel, my sound felt a little more constrained, a little less flexible, but always producing a pretty sound. For some reason, I think if I was doing a concert with harp or maybe guitar, this would be the barrel that I reach for. Just a little bit of a lighter sound to help balance everything nicely. And that about does it. I didn't have a crazy amount of time to spend with each barrel. And of course, everyone perceives these things differently anyway, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how the external differences of a barrel can change its sound. Again, were these changes huge? No, but to me they were appreciable. It's not too hard for me to imagine that between all the different design variances that SNS can make and provide, that someone could find their perfect barrel in their workshop. And ultimately, I just think it's cool that there's a workshop out there willing to do that for the clarinet community. I mean, you don't have to be some major artist to send an email and get your perfect barrel made. Anyway, Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. If while you're here, you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. Until next time, happy practicing.